In this lesson, we're going to look at how to add and subtract fractions. We're most interested in fractions whose denominators, remember that's the bottom number, are not equal. And we're also going to consider how to work with mixed numbers. Now, we said we're going to be mainly working with fractions whose denominators are not equal. And so it's really important that you know how to add and subtract fractions when the denominators are equal. So I'd like you to begin by pausing the video now and just attempting the five questions on screen. You shouldn't need longer than about four or five minutes to complete this. So hopefully you've had enough time just to work through these questions. We're going to look at the answers for each one. Hopefully you remember that to add or subtract fractions when their denominators, the bottom numbers are the same, we simply add or subtract the numerators, the top numbers. And so we consider question A. We have one fifth plus two fifths. The denominator is five in both cases, so we simply add the numerators. One plus two is three, so one fifth plus two fifths is three fifths. Similarly, for part B, we have two thirds minus one third. Two take away one is one, so two thirds minus one third is one third. For part C, we do 3 plus 2 to give us 5, and then we see that 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths is 5 sevenths. Part D was a little trickier. Um, we had 1 minus a quarter, so we had to spot that 1 was equal to 4 quarters. So we were doing 4 quarters minus 1 quarter, which we can then see is 3 quarters. Finally, we have part E. That's 5 ninths plus 7 ninths. 5 plus 7 is 12, so we get 12 ninths. Now, we're not quite finished with this for two reasons. Firstly, 12 ninths is a top heavy or an improper fraction. And so we're going to split it into a mixed number. And to do so, we ask ourselves, how many nines make 12? Well, it's one, and then we have a remainder of three. The denominator stays the same, so 12 ninths is equal to one and three ninths. Hopefully you spotted though, we're still not quite finished because three ninths can be simplified into one third by dividing both three and nine by three. So five ninths plus seven ninths is one and one third. And that's all fine and well, but let's introduce a sixth question. This time we want to evaluate one quarter plus three eighths. And so we're going to ask ourselves, what makes this question a bit trickier than the one we did previously? Hopefully you can spot that the denominators are not equal. We have four as the denominator of our first fraction and eight as the denominator of our second. So what do we need to do? Well, to add fractions whose denominators are not the same, we need to find two fractions whose denominators are the same. And so we find a lowest common denominator and create a pair of equivalent fractions. In the case of these two fractions, to find the lowest common denominator, we want to find the LCM or lowest common multiple of four and eight. In other words, the smallest number that appears in both the four and eight times tables. The smallest number that appears in both the four and eight times tables is eight. So that's the lowest common multiple of four and eight, and it means that that's our lowest common denominator. And so if we look at a quarter, we know that we need to create an equivalent fraction whose denominator is equal to eight. And so we ask ourselves, well, what do we do to get from four to eight? Well, we times by two. And if we do that to the denominator of our fraction, we absolutely have to do it to the numerator. So one times two is two. And this means that a quarter is equivalent, it's the same as two eighths. And so we can now rewrite our problem and we see that a quarter plus three eighths is the same as two eighths plus three eighths. And now we should see that the denominators are equal. And we know that when the denominators are equal, we just add the numerators. So we do two add three, which is five. And we see that a quarter plus three eighths is equal to five eighths. Now that we have that sort of basic technique down, we'll look at another example. Let's work out eight ninths minus one third. Firstly, we don't need to be freaked out that we're subtracting fractions rather than adding. The process itself is almost identical. It's just that at that final step, instead of adding the numerators, we subtract them. And so we look at our two fractions and we say, are their denominators equal? 
They quite clearly aren't. The denominator of our first fraction is 9, and the denominator of our second fraction is 3. And so we're going to begin by finding the lowest common multiple of 9 and 3. Remember, that just means what's the smallest number in both the 9 and 3 times tables? And the smallest number in both their times tables is 9. The denominator of our first fraction is already 9. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the denominator of our second fraction equal to 9. And so if you remember, we say to ourselves, well, what do we do to get from 3 to 9? And we times by 3. And so we're going to do the same to our numerator. And that gives us 1 times 3, which is 3. So 1 third is equal to 3 ninths. And then this means that 8 ninths minus a third is the same as 8 ninths minus 3 ninths. And of course, now that their denominators are the same, we just subtract the numerators. 8 minus 3 is 5, so 8 ninths minus 3 ninths is equal to 5 ninths. We're going to consider one final example before you go off and practice yourself. We're going to add 4 fifths to 2 thirds. The denominators are not equal, and so we're going to begin by finding the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3. Well, the smallest number in both their times tables is 15, and so the lowest common multiple of 5 and 3 is 15. We're now going to create a pair of equivalent fractions, and we ask ourselves, what would we multiply 5 by to get to 15? Well, it's clearly 3, and so we're going to do the same to the numerator. 4 times 3 is 12, and so 4 fifths is equal to 12 fifteenths. Let's do that again with 2 thirds. We want to make the denominator 15. This time, though, we're going to times by 5. And so we do the same to the numerator. And since 2 times 5 is 10, 2 thirds is equivalent to 10 fifteenths. This then means that 4 fifths plus 2 thirds is 12 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths. And then since 12 and 10 is 22, this becomes 22 fifteenths. Now, in fact, the question hasn't asked us to, but it's always sensible to write our answer as a mixed number. So we ask ourselves, how many 15s make 22? That's 1 with a remainder of 7, and so 22 15ths is equal to 1 and 7 15ths. And now it's your turn to give this process a go. I'd like you to have a go at the Adding and Subtracting Fractions Question Grids worksheets. There are three worksheets in this pack. There's gold, silver, and bronze. Now, I would suggest bronze if you're still not hugely confident, and silver if you're feeling pretty good about this topic. We're going to leave gold for now, since we're going to look at mixed numbers a little bit later. Pause the video now and give yourself 10 to 15 minutes to work through the worksheet of your choice. So hopefully you've had a chance to work through those questions and mark your work. And some of you might have jumped ahead and had a look at that third sheet. And on it, you might have spotted questions like four and two thirds plus two and one fifth. So how do we answer a question like this? And your instinct might be to add the integer parts, that's the whole number parts first, and then move on and add the fractions. Now, there are a couple of reasons that this isn't necessarily the most sensible method to use. Firstly, we don't know that when we add the fractions part, we're going to get a nice number less than one. We could end up with an improper fraction, and combining integers and improper fractions is a little bit awkward. Secondly, subtracting using this technique is pretty horrible. So instead, we're going to begin by converting the numbers into improper or top-heavy fractions. Let's begin by looking at four and two thirds. To change from a mixed number into an improper fraction, we begin by multiplying the integer part by the denominator. So that's four times three, which is equal to 12. Then whatever this result is, we add it to the numerator of our fraction. So we get 12 add two, which is equal to 14. That 14 is the numerator of the improper fraction and our denominator remains unchanged. It's still three. So 4 and 2 thirds is equal to 14 thirds. Let's now do this with 2 and 1 fifth. Remember, we do the integer, the whole number part, multiplied by the denominator. So we get 10, and then we take that number and we add the numerator to give us 11. 
11 is the numerator of our improper fraction, and the denominator remains unchanged, so it's 5. And so now we're going to add these two fractions by adding 14 thirds and 11 fifths. And we go back to the method we used in the previous examples. We find a common denominator. The lowest common multiple of 3 and 5 is 15. So that's going to be the denominator of our fractions. To get 15, we multiply 3 by 5. So we also need to multiply 14 by 5. And when we do, we get 70. Similarly, to get 15 as the denominator of our second fraction, we need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3. So we get 33 over 15. And so we see that to add our fractions, we now need to add 70 and 33. And that gives us 103 fifteenths. But of course, we're not quite finished. We were given two numbers written in mixed number form. So we need to convert this back into a mixed number. To do this, we divide 103 by 15 and we get 6 with a remainder of 13. 6 forms the integer part and 13 forms the numerator of our fraction. And as before, the denominator remains unchanged. So 103 fifteenths is equal to 6 and 13 fifteenths. And so we can say that 4 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 1 fifth must be equal to 6 and 13 fifteenths. You're now ready to have a go yourself. I'd like you to look at the worksheet subtracting and adding mixed numbers. This includes a few basic examples followed by some worded questions. Once again, give yourself 10 to 15 minutes and mark it at the end. Pause the video now and come back to us when you're ready. Welcome back to the very final part of this lesson. And for the final part, we're going to perform an almost plenary. We're going to really assess our understanding of what we've done today. A really good way to do this is to combine the processes that we've used with another part of maths. So here we're going to consider geometry. In particular, we're looking at the perimeter of a rectangle. The question says, the perimeter of the rectangle is 10 centimeters. What is the missing dimension? And then we have one length given and it's one and one third centimeters. So once again, pause the video and give this question a go. And when you're ready, press play again. Hopefully you've given this question a good shot and let's see how we would answer it. So firstly, we recall what we mean by the word perimeter. The perimeter is the total distance around the shape. And so it's the sum of all of its dimensions. Now, of course, we've only been given one dimension, but we do know another side of the rectangle. We know that opposite sides in a rectangle are equal in length. And so this side is also one and one third centimeters. Let's begin then by adding these two lengths, one and one third plus one and one third. And we can do this by first turning them into improper fractions. So we get four thirds plus four thirds. And since their denominators are equal, we add the numerators and we see that we have a total dimension of eight thirds. We were told the total perimeter of the rectangle is 10 centimeters. So we're now going to subtract eight thirds from 10. And we can write integers as 10 over one. To perform this subtraction, we then need to create a common denominator. And to do so, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of our first fraction by three. So we get 30 thirds minus eight thirds. And once the denominators are equal, of course, we can subtract their numerators. 30 minus eight is 22, so we get 22 thirds. Now, of course, we're not quite finished. That's the total sum of these two sides. But we do know that these two sides are equal in length, so we can halve 22 thirds. And you probably have a number of techniques when it comes to dividing fractions. Uh, but actually, since the numerator here is even, we can simply halve it and say that half of 22 thirds must be 11 thirds. And so the width of our rectangle is 11 thirds. But of course, we're going to need to turn this back into a mixed number. So we divide 11 by 3. That gives us 3 with the remainder of 2. And the denominator remains unchanged. So the missing dimension in our rectangle, its width, is 3 and 2 thirds centimeters. 
And we're finished. That's our lesson on adding and subtracting fractions. I hope it's been useful to you and hopefully we'll see you back here soon.